Hello everyone, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Island. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, over $127 million was used for Help for Homes initiative. Attorney General labels Mikael Elewere's allegations a stab in the dark. And plane crash victims make final journey. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. $127.1 million was used for the three phases of the Help for Homes initiative. In Parliament today, Minister for Women Marisani Vuniwanga said that $86.2 million was used for Phase 1, $16.6 million for Phase 2, and $24.3 million for Phase 3. This assisted more than 37,000 people. However, there were some cheats. Ana Ravulo with more. While some people were being helped under the initiative, others were being prosecuted. Some Fijians have been prosecuted for false statements given during the Help for Home initiatives. Some have been acquitted and are being helped as we speak. Madam Speaker, the preparation for monitoring and evaluation processes has commenced, whereby each beneficiary folder has been created and respective invoices, delivery documents together with the application forms have been filed for the house-to-house -house verification process. Opposition MP Moses Simbuli Tavu then raised an issue on why two ministries are dealing with this initiative and why some people who have been acquitted still do not have the materials with them after it was taken away. This is the problem when uh, the government is disorganized. The uh, Ministry of Women, they give cuts, and the Ministry of Economy, they will do the delivery. And the Attorney General is on record on 24th January in Abokawa saying that 60 tons of materials will be uh, taken to Tavuni. For th in th after three weeks, but still people in the are waiting. What can the minister do? Minister only is only reporting on the faces done. Uh, what, 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 what can the minister do to advise on how that can be reconciled? How that can be reconciled? This is the problem. The government should set up a specific unit to carry out both the cuts and delivery. What the minister can do in, in, to reconcile those problems? It's poor implementation, Madam Speaker. The fact of the matter is none of the people on the other side are actually acknowledging the fact that such an initiative has never taken place. Never in the history of Fiji have any cyclones taken place. And, Madam Speaker, what they also don't mention is in the 1970s and 80s, etc., when they did do rebuild, it was only ethnically based rebuild. They only did for Itoke people. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. The Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable minister was the one who changed it. That's a fact. It's not a lie. Madam Speaker, it was only done in villages. That's a fact. And Madam Speaker, it was done only in selected villages. Meanwhile, 37,077 families were assisted after tropical cyclone Winston. Anna Rovulo, FBC News. A team from the Commonwealth of Learning Organization is expected to be in the country this month to conduct assessments on technical colleges around the country. COAL is an intergovernmental organization to promote the development and sharing of open learning and distance education knowledge, resources and technologies. Akusita Thale reports the government requested COAL for their assistance during the recent Commonwealth Ministers meeting in Nandi. The government has requested the Commonwealth of Learning Organization to carry out an assessment and conduct a gap analysis as a way to monitor the technical colleges that have been set up. We hope to have some people down on the ground at least within a month to carry out an assessment in terms of whether technical colleges are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing, what are the areas of gap that we need to identify, and indeed going forward, what are the further areas that we can put up as courses and indeed get further you know, recognition and uh, hopefully further accreditation too. This comes after the opposition questioned the accreditation of technical colleges. Can the minister inform the House whether the courses offered by the technical college in Fiji are, are, are accredited and uh, have international recognition? The Fiji Higher Education Commission um, assures us that the courses delivered by the technical colleges are accredited as national qualifications on the Fiji qualifications framework. These courses are internationally recognized. 
13 national qualification courses with an addition of five new courses have international recognition across different countries that have the same qualification framework, levels 1 to 10. Said Kayum says they're not international accredited as accreditation is done by the country that holds them as different countries have different sets of accreditation. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Lands Minister Fayaz Koya says it's mischievous and inaccurate to say the government permits the removal and destruction of large areas of mangroves. Opposition leader Rote Mumukepa had raised a question, saying that such permits are negatively impacting the ecological diversity and contributing to climate change issues. Ritika Pratap reports. The Lands Ministry says there is an intergovernmental coordination when issuing leases for foreshore development. The federal process includes ensuring that the applicants for foreshore leases actually submit an environmental impact assessment, a fisheries impact assessment, and conduct consultation with resource owners in order to obtain the consent to waive uh, traditional fishing rights. Koya says the Lands Environment and Fisheries Ministries are collectively involved in granting approval for any such development. However, Opposition MP William Ngavoka alleges that there is still slackness in their part. So, fine, three ministries are looking at it, but they are lax. They are not doing their job properly. My, my question, Madam Speaker, is this. There's a waiver on fishing rights when you clear mangroves. Is the compensation? Has it been reviewed lately? Is it sufficient? Just like anything in government, there is a constant review process with everything, Madam Speaker. And this has been said time and time again, and it's not just by me, the Honorable uh, Prime Minister, the Minister of Economy, Minister of Agriculture, we all say the same thing. Fiji is at such a stage of development that we require constant review for everything that we do. Minister clarified that at this point in time, the government promotes the reforestation of mangrove at a ratio which is much higher than that harvested. First you distract, and then you replant again. Aren't these conflicting? It's no use making just sweeping statements about these things and trying to alarm the public to say we're actually destroying all the mangroves around Fiji. It is not being done like that. We have the presidency of COP23. Do you honestly believe that Fiji would be trying to destroy its own environment in light of that? The ministry says the environmental impact assessment report submitted by any developer is thoroughly verified by the Itoke Lands and Fisheries Commission and the consent is then witnessed by the provincial office. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Speaker of Parliament Dr. Chiko Loveni today ruled against the point of order made by opposition MP Professor Biman Prasad. Prasad yesterday raised that Attorney General Ayas Said Kayyum allegedly breached the standing order and also allegedly misled the House, bringing dishonor and disrepute. He said that this is the issue regarding Said Kayyum's comments that there was no data collected based on ethnicity in the 2000 and 2017 census. Dr. Luveni says that the Attorney General did not mislead Parliament at any point in time and if there are anomalies with the data on ethnicity as confirmed by the government statistician, then there is no such data that can be aggregated and released. In this regard, the comments made by the Honourable Attorney General are not misleading, nor does it bring dishonour or disrepute to Parliament. As I indicated earlier, deliberately misleading Parliament is indeed a serious matter, which can also be a contempt of Parliament. It is equally important that such allegations are not lightly made against any member of Parliament, and that all necessary facts are properly scrutinised by any member who wishes to make such a serious allegation against any other member. The Vanuo Madhuwata traditionally handed over the bodies of flight instructor Iliesa Tawalo and trainee pilot Mirlesita Lutu to their families at the Wangele Airport in Lambasa this morning. After five days in the mortuary at the Lambasa Hospital, Tawalo and Lutu's bodies are now finally back where they belong with family. Eleanor Thurangai View has the story. Arriving one last time at the Wangele Airport in Lambasa as teacher and student but this time in a car escorted by police. Ilesa Tawalo and Merle Sita Lutu arrived at the airport this morning for their final journey home, their coffins lying side by side, exactly 10 days after the plane they were in crashed behind the Delaycoro Mountains. Carried by officers from the disciplined forces, the wooden caskets, 
wrapped in plastic, were laid down on the arrivals lounge of the airport for the traditional handing over to their families. After the bodies were received by the families, the women, led by the wife of the two Madhuata Filomena Katunibere, draped the coffins with traditional Madhuata mats known as kuta before they were carried away into a waiting aeroplane. Led by the Commissioner Northern, police and military officers, civil servants, the St. Joseph's Old Girls Association in Lambasa, relatives, friends and members of the public gathered at the airport to farewell Tawalo and Lutu, who have been here on Madhuata soil since the plane crash. The small ceremony that uh, was uh, taken in the mosque just uh, to show uh, the people of Fiji and the families of the two that the Vanu of Madhuata is uh, still mourning for them. The Vanu of Madhuata uh, really uh, would like to show uh, in terms of uh, how we respect uh, the, the lives of the two and uh, their families before they leave uh, uh, the shores of Madhuata. Tawalo and Lutu arrived at this airport 10 days ago with so much to look forward to. Today, they leave the very same airport as flight instructor and student side by side, silently in their caskets, and flew on their last flight together as student and teacher on their way back home for burial. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. Meanwhile, the late Ilias Atawala was finally laid to rest today at the Enamanu Cemetery in Nandi. Families, friends and workmates gathered today as they paid their final respect to Atawala. Felipe Naikaso has more. This was the last flight for Ilias Atawala as he made his final journey home before being laid to rest. Pacific Flying School students, staff and friends gathered this morning at the school hangar as they farewelled their comrade. Tawalo's body was also taken to his residence in Nandi as his family, relatives and friends waited to say their final goodbyes from home. All I can say today is that Ilyasa was a very respectful man. He never spoke back harshly to anyone and was always obedient. He was always well behaved and respected his elders. I know that the day Ilyas passed on, he will be remembered in heaven. Tawalo was well respected by his colleagues and students at the Pacific Flying School who say that he was a very dedicated person. He's always humble, always humble. Very kind, uh, hardworking, and he would give everything to help his uh, students and his uh, unfortunate uh, people around him. And even after school, he would go to Mba and have prayers in Mba for, for the families that, uh, that was... Uh, and uh, that's one of the education that uh, Ilesa has. Today, families and friends celebrated the life of Ilesa Tawalo, who was religious, very considerate of others, and someone who loved his family. Tawalo was laid to rest at the Anamanu Cemetery in Nandi. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Still to come, Fijian women celebrate their day. An FBC Open Day hype builds up. Stay with us. Bula, Kero Mai Singatoka, Kero Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have a new thing. The combination of the Bula Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. We have a new thing. 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 Attorney General and Education Minister Aya Said Kayum has labelled Mikaele Lewere's allegations about the University of the South Pacific as a stab in the dark carrying no merit. In giving his view on a report provided by the Standing Committee of Social Affairs, Lewere alleged that there was a culture of silence at USP and fear of losing funding from government. Ali Kimbia with the story.
Opposition MP Michael Lewere claims that 10 professors from the University of the South Pacific have departed due to the culture of silence and the fear of speaking against the current government. But the Speaker, universities are not places of silence and for the dumb. They are supposed to be places of innovative ideas flying freely with freedom of expression and scrutinizing the conduct of public affairs to create meaningful debate on national issues and policies. I think there was a bit of a, a bit of stab in the dark. However, while replying to Lewere's comments, Said Kayum says he is baffled by Lewere's comments on freedom of expression at USP. Of course, uh, some of your members have actually been holding meetings there too, uh, without any interference by anybody, not even withstanding the fact that government does fund it to the tune of $36 million. So I think it is quite a miss of the Honourable Member to start making those sorts of allegations without any proof, which obviously is becoming a standard practice from the other side, both inside this House and outside the House. Said Kayum says nothing of this nature has affected the Social Affairs Committee's work and institutions like USP has their own level of academic independence. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. There are now more than 40 inclusive schools in Fiji, which enables children with disabilities to learn alongside children who don't have a disability. Responding to an oral question in Parliament, the minister responsible, Merisene Vuniwanga, told the House that in the 2017 census, 13.7% or 113,595 Fijians registered a disability. With several initiatives to assist persons with disabilities, Vuniwanga highlighted the assistance in the education sector. The education system, uh, in the education system, there are 43 mainstream schools that are now inclusive schools. From these 43, 24 schools are receiving special education grants to ensure that students with special needs are accorded the attention they deserve. Minister for Women Marisani Vuniwanga says sexism is one of the major challenges faced by women in Fiji at the moment. Marking International Women's Day, she says sexism has affected women's political and economic participation. Catherine Krishna reports. Vuniwanga says this was revealed in the World Economic Forum report, which rated Fiji 127th out of 144 countries surveyed. She says the four things that were part of the survey included education, health, political and economic participation, and highest mark was won. In health and education, Fiji rated over 0 0.9 for each. When it came to economic participation, we dropped to 0 0.4. And then when it came to political participation, it's 0 0.1. South Pacific Stock Exchange Chief Executive Krishika Narayan says the SPSC is also concerned about women participating on the stock exchange. As of the latest statistics, we have a total of 105 directors on SPSC boards, and that's a total of 19 listed companies. So out of the entire 105, only 13 are female directors. Narayan says the SPSC is considering having mandatory rules for women to participate in listed companies. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. In line with the celebration of International Women's Day, the Westpac Bank of Fiji has again announced the availability of women and girls education grants for this year. This has been an ongoing program since 2003 and Westpac Fiji is embarking on a bigger project for 2018. Sainani Mboila reports. The nine available grants are aimed at financially assisting women and girls to take positive steps towards fulfilling their educational potential. A successful grant recipients will receive funds to contribute towards their educational costs. The primary school grant is $400, the high school grant is $1,000, and the tertiary student grant is $2,150. The celebration of International Women's Day coincides with the grant announcement, and Westpac Bank gave time at the launch to numerous female executives to share their experiences. You need to take on a great challenge. Don't ask yourself all the reasons why you should do it. You should ask yourself why not. Because you just be yourself. You know, if you uh, in coming into a post, don't measure yourself against what someone else has achieved. I really appreciate the power relationship when it comes to what it is to be a man. What is it to be a woman in our workplace, in our home, in our family, in our society? Applications for the grants closes on the 8th of May. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News.
The review of the disaster risk management legislation is timely as it will help address many current issues. Disaster Management Permanent Secretary Meletim Bani Marama says the review will bring the legislation up to par with new challenges. The Disaster Management Ministry today signed a memorandum of understanding with the International Red Cross that will allow them to work together on the review. The ministry will therefore work with IFRC to conduct research and consultation for an appropriate disaster legislative work framework for the people of Fiji. The review process will take 10 months to complete. Thus, the review will contemplate new emerging issues not considered before, like climate change, disaster risk reduction, gender, disability, the cluster disaster coordination arrangements, to name a few. As Saturday comes closer, a lot of excitement is building up as the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation is set to host its annual Open Day. FBC's team leader event, Salini at the Moala, says this year's event will have a number of surprises in store for all those making their way down to FBC's headquarters at 69 Gladstone Road in Suva. This year's Open Day will be different. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation expects a bigger crowd and people will have a chance to see how it has moved from what it was to the new ultra-modern operation it now is. We always have something special at FBC. So uh, basically we, have, we will have entertainment the whole day uh, from 9 to 3 p.m. Um, and you meet your personalities, those that you see on TV, those that you hear on radio, you're able to interact with them. Um, we have Bouncing Castle for the kids. We also have food stores and uh, we also have Walesi that will be here, the Fiji National Provident Fund. And we have clients who will be showcasing um, their stuff as well. In sports later on with Jamie, NRL kicks off today, but here's Akosita Tale with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening. Coming up in business tonight, FNPF appoints new CEO. And in growing, Fiji Nasino Town Council gets over $1.3 million assistance. Stay with us. Oti kongo na tao na Singapore, ando talifa ka na wakarong na mbule fan number two ay na serye. Wia dora chumuni kurna bili, ibora ni batu karahan para binarna, ando talita kina na wakarong na mbule fan number two ay na serye. Bula, bula FM number two ay na serye. Leading business, the Fiji National Provident Fund Board today announced the appointment of Chao Chikoroi as its new Chief Executive Officer. In announcing the appointment, Board Chair Ajith Godagoda said the Board has confidence that Koroi will lead the FNPF through the next three years given his experience, skills and qualifications. Godagoda said the Board undertook a thorough, stringent and transparent election process to ensure the best candidate was appointed to the job. Koroi had served as the Chief Operating Officer for the last two years and as Chief Investment Officer for seven years before that. Redison Blue Resort Fiji has once again been awarded as the number one family resort in Fiji. The resort was recognized yet again by another prominent travel website company as winners in the 2018 Trip Expert Accolade. Sorry. The Trip Expert Award recognizes the top hotels and finest attractions around the world, with fewer than 2% of hotels worldwide receiving the Experts Award. Redison Blue Fiji has won this award for the past three years. The Trip Expert score is calculated based on how many of the 85 source publications have recommended the venue and what they have said about it. General Manager of the Redison Blue Resort, John Benson, says this type of award motivates the team. I'd really like to say thank you to everyone that works at Radisson Blue. Um, it is the team, I mean there are many beautiful resorts in the world. What makes the difference and what makes it live is the actual team that works in that resort. And I think the team here really is an extension of their family. They, they sort of have their home family and then they have their work family. And we all work together very much in that sense. So I'd, I'd pretty, like, pretty much like to say thank you very much to, to the entire team here for their consistent efforts. Rocco is here again with us with the latest from the money markets. Pinaka, the US dollar recovered ground this morning, drawing relief from positive labor market data.
Traders await announcement of which countries will be exempted from the planned U.S. import tariffs on steel and aluminium. The Australian import and export figures for January were released this morning at minus 2% and 4% respectively. This resulted in a trade balance of 1.055 million, up from the previous figure of minus 1.358 million. The foreign exchange market remains volatile as we await clarification of the U.S. tariff issue and expect some other major economic announcement over the next few days. And that's a wrap on our economic update for today. Tinaka. Thanks, Rocco. Now looking at today's currency exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar. The Fiji dollar rose against the Chinese yuan and Kiwi dollar and remained fairly steady against the rest of the currencies we cover. And taking a look at the commodities market, oil prices were up at $63.31 a barrel. Gold fell almost $11 to $1,326 per ounce and silver closed at $16.49 an ounce. In growing, Fiji Nasino Town Council received the highest level of assistance from the $1.3 million grant provided by the government for the maintenance of drainage works by municipalities. Speaking in Parliament, Minister for Waterways Dr. Mahendra Reddy said Nandi Town Council received $352,000 while Raki Raki received $212,000. The highest was to Nasuno Town Council, 476,000. Mr. Speaker, the amount there reflects the nature of problems that these municipal councils are facing and the size. So, uh, the highest Nasuno Town Council it is pretty large area, um, and unfortunately, the kinds of rate fares that we face there uh, is not really a healthy rate rate fare in the sense of. Payment. So that's why the such amount has been uh, allocated to the town council to ensure that we are able to assist the town council in dealing with these very problems there. And that's business this evening. Here's Jamie now with sports. Thanks, Akosita, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, Vermalua in doubt for Vancouver Sevens. And teams wrap up preparations for Pacific Challenge. This and more coming up. I am Pramila Vairuku Reki Reki. I am in the morning. I am in Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. हम लोग बार टाउन के केरियर ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिजरेटर से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट आई लव मिर्ची एफएम हमें स्पिन तक ताबू आके मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफ It's highly likely veteran Fiji Sevens forward Tasa Veramalua will miss the Vancouver tournament this weekend. One of the highest capped players in the side, Veramalua has not been part of training runs for the last two days. Vasnil Prasad with the details. Tasa Veramalua is likely to miss his first Sevens tournament in two years if he fails to recover from a knee injury suffered in the third place playoff against South Africa in the Las Vegas Sevens in USA last weekend. Chas is the only one really. And you know, for Chas's respect as well, we're sort of looking on with for him potentially Hong Kong Commonwealth Games as well. So um, you know we know we've got big games to play, and we want to make sure that our, our team are fit and healthy, and obviously for their welfare as well. But good news for fans: Amenoni Nasila Sila has been cleared of injury. All back, they've had the week. You know they've had the two or three days to get themselves together now. Obviously, our medical staff have been working on them as well, working with them. Um, they've trained this morning in the gym, and we'll train again this afternoon. Coach Gareth Beba says Winga Ulu Iyata Batanisavu, who missed the Las Vegas tournament, could make the cut in the Vancouver Sevens this weekend. Training, you know, like the others, he's training to make his debut uh, here in Vancouver. Uh, as I said, I'll pick the squad, but he's trained well. He's a he's a good worker. Uh, he keeps his head down and gets on with the job that he needs to. Um, you know, he hasn't had his breaks yet. Uh, but as I said before, there's been a number of players in this squad who have travelled with the team, have learned from being around the squad. Baba will name his final 13-member squad on Saturday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports.
Meanwhile, the Australian seven side had its first training session in cold Vancouver conditions, while Vodafone Fiji is the latest company to throw its support behind the Fiji Bitter Maris Sevens. The mobile company's sponsorship includes the supply of all communications and ICT services for the tournament. The Maris Sevens will be held on the 23rd and the 24th of this month at ANZ Stadium in Suva. We want to say we cherish this partnership. Uh, it's, when, it's when two big brands come together, you have an expulsion of forces. And the forces today here are what we see that will transpire at the ground at the 42nd Fiji Bitter Maris Sevens. Providing as part of our sponsorship phones, airtime, and also uh, dedicated internet bandwidth for streaming of the uh, tournament. It's usually a bruising encounter when two Pacific rivals meet on the rugby pitch, and the same is expected when the Fiji Warriors take on Samoa A in the World Rugby Pacific Challenge opener in Suva tomorrow. Both camps have a fair idea of what to expect from each other, but have decided to focus more on what they need to get right on game day. Meli Tavanga reports. It is again expected to be a fierce encounter when the Fiji Warriors take on Samoa A tomorrow. None other than Manu Samoa's most cap player and team assistant coach, Brian Lima, knows what it is like to take on the Fijians at home. We all know about Fiji and they, they love to play with the ball and they're going to they're gonna run from anywhere. So we have to be really uh, aware of that. Uh, that's their strength and that's their flair. However, the hosts are adamant of a positive contest against their opponent. Well, the expectation is uh, uh, to go in, into the competition, uh, to go up there and, and, uh, and just show you, you know, expose your talent, expose your talent and, uh, and, uh, and, and do our best out there and, uh, and then to defend the, the Pacific Rugby Challenge again. Meanwhile, the Samoan side is trying to solidify their set pieces before game day. We focus on is to, uh, to get our set pieces right, to get a ball. Remember, that's the foundation of the game, and to get a ball so we can uh, put together our face play. Fiji battles Samoa at 5 p.m. tomorrow at Suva's ANZ Stadium. Melitawanga, FBC Sports. Broncos Rugby League coach Wayne Bennett has come out firing ahead of tonight's NRL season open against the Dragons. He's defending his decision to play prop Matt Lodge, who was arrested in 2015 for a home invasion in New York. Meanwhile, you can watch the Broncos take on the Dragons live on FBC TV at 9.05 this evening. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in new media right after the break. Check out some high-end smartphones that are set for release soon. That's coming up. Bula, kero mai sina toka, kero ndo tali taka na varo rong na radio Fiji One ndo mai viti. Aye, wala na rin si. Uti ko minsan mo ti bola ndo tali taka na radio Fiji One kina ndo mai viti. Kaya ko yado si ndo tali, na burara mai na omani, na ronga. Gito tali taka niya gito minsan wala pa na gito rong o varo rong na radio Fiji One ndo mai viti. Na radio Fiji One ndo mai viti na bonga ni BNN. Media tonight, the Galaxy S9 is not the only new player hurling out of Barcelona. Let's take a look. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the Weather World. A very muggy Thursday across the nation for today. So like the usual weather scenarios, rain can be expected by overnight. Taking a look in the west for today, humidity level was quite high but rain will cool that for us. Eastwards from Pek Haba to Suba, rain clouds were around so a bit cooler for us. And up north, Sabu Sabu was mild at 29 degrees. I wonder who made the most of today. At sea, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide will be at 12.16 am with low tide at 6.14 am. Sunrise will be at 6.07. For tomorrow, who doesn't love Fridays? But do note, rain is building up and chances are it might rain in the afternoon. Tomorrow's temps, Lambasa and Sabu Sabu will be cool at 29 degrees. 
and looking further on to Saturday, light showers could be around, but other than that, you can freely enjoy your Saturday. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, what are your messages for International Women's Day? I just want to wish uh, all the women a uh, happy Women's Day. And uh, I hope that they will enjoy this day and um, the only day that is set for them. Uh, my message to the women out there is uh, for them to be brave, uh, look up all the time, go an extra mile all the time, and always uh, stay focused if there's, a, if there's a problems out there. International Women's Day is about empowering women all over the world. In the world of the weird and the wonderful classic children's books are getting a 21st century upgrade. British researchers have begun testing a project that would bring 3D versions of children's stories to life on gaming platforms. Recapping the main stories for tonight, over $127 million was used for Help for Homes initiative. Attorney General labels Mikaela Lewere's allegations a stab in the dark and plane crash victims make final journey home. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, should an international standard facility be built in Fiji to host big sporting events? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, a perfect setting for a picnic taken at the Hideaway Resort by Kishore Mishra. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Happy International Women's Day. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye for now. Radio Fiji One I have a Radio Fiji One. 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 I have a Radio Fiji